So now for this demonstration, we have a NPN transistor, 2N3904, and it's wired up as a common collector or an emitter follower, whichever one you want to call it. Different text will use one of those two terms. But here you can see we have the collector directly to the positive rail. The base, we have a control voltage. It's controlled by this trim pot and also this relatively high value resistor. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So very little current is going to come through here. All it's going to do is control the voltage to the base of the transistor. We'll look at that later. Now at the emitter, we have two things. We have a resistor that goes right to ground. This is a one kilo ohm resistor. And then uh, we have a load here. So the load is our voltage out. Voltage out is just what the voltage will be at this point. But we're going to include a load to help for demonstration purposes. So you see that's at the emitter there. It's a protective resistor, 220 ohms to protect from the 5 volt power supply and an LED which comes to ground. Long lead of the LED of course towards the positive side of the circuit. Short lead the cathode towards the negative. The long lead is the anode. Short leads the cathode. So it's set to conduct easily and light up. So now we come to the point of this circuit and the point is we want the voltage at the emitter to be about the same as the voltage at the base. And then of course you'll lose a little bit of voltage at the base due to the this is a NPN type transistor that PN area is like a diode it takes a certain amount of voltage before it will conduct and that is lost in the process so the voltage at the emitter will be about the voltage at the base minus the base to emitter voltage drop and so we will test that out right now with this simple circuit so I'm going to take this trim pot, right now it's set so there's zero volts at the base and I'm going to turn it up and you notice we have to set it about halfway before the LED lights up. I'll go down just a little bit. You can see in that halfway range it's going to be somewhere around about 2.4 volts or so. The, the LED kicks in and uh, starts conducting. So now we're going to get the multimeter and set it to read voltages and then we'll uh, put this end to ground here and first we'll measure the voltage making it to the base of the transistor and as I said it's about 2.4 2.5 volts in that range now we'll come down here try to get a good, good connection and you can see it's in the range of about 1.8 volts that's what I said it takes to get the LED to conduct. And it's about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts lower than the voltage at the base. So now I'm gonna turn the voltage to the base up. And we'll measure the voltage at the base. So right now it's about 4.3 for various reasons. And uh, down here you see it's 3.5. So again, we're in that about 0.7 volt drop range but you can see the voltage at the emitter is uh, basically the voltage at the base minus about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts in that range and finally we'll come to the point of this circuit so we're going to use the voltage divider now it outputs a voltage and the same 10 kilo ohm resistor to uh, provide voltage to the LED directly so the resistor comes to the anode of the LED cathode comes to ground and now when I turn up the voltage you'll see that you can barely see the LED light up that's because of all the resistance involved but uh, when we had the transistor we didn't have that problem we got an output voltage about the voltage we set here and the current was not controlled from the power source. We needed to add a protective resistor. Whereas here the current is already controlled. And that's the point. We can get a set voltage from a power source and the 
unlimited basically current that it can provide which we had to control by a voltage at some source that for some reason we want the voltage at that source applied to the circuit but that source can't provide enough current that's the whole point to the common collector emitter follower circuit